Greetings, Pilgrims. Welcome to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage, and today I have something pretty exciting to share with you. We are making some health potions. So for our game, of course, we're going to be running around dealing with bad guys, and of course, once in a while, we will get a bruise or two. So let's make sure that we can heal up from that encounter. And I have these three different health potions here to share with you, and these can very easily be changed into our energy potions or any kind of potion you want. The color is variable, and it's very easy to change this, and we have this little bubbling effect. See the little bubbles going up the side here? And if I go into play mode, let's take a look at them in action. They do rotate. So they'll sit on the ground, and they'll rotate infinitely here. And, of course, this one on the left looks like he's rotating faster, but he's not. It's just because of the corners of the box nature of the model there. So I will provide you the one texture you'll need for this, which is the bubbles, and then the three models themselves, and then the rest of it we're going to do right here in the episode together. So let's jump in and take a look. Okay, so to make this work, we need four things. We need three materials, and we need a blueprint for our actual potion here. So this is the same blueprint three times, and then what I've done is I've just swapped out the actual model. So if I click it here and say here's our potion, I can say what type of potion I want it to be as far as the model. And then here you could change out your liquid material, which is we're, we're going to create this together. You could switch out this liquid material for say a health liquid or an energy liquid or a magic, whatever you want. So let's take a look at our three materials. First up, the smallest of the, of the bunch, is the material for the little cork here on top. So I'll go over to our cork material. This is very simple. So what you're going to do to create these materials is right-click in your area here. So I've got a whole bunch of junk here. But if I right-click and say new material and just give it a name, usually the letters M-A-T underscore, and I'll call this new mat, enter. So M-A-T is the, uh, you know, for material. So when you're searching, that everything comes up nicely there. So you just do M-A-T and then what you're looking for. So we'll double-click that guy and he'll open up. And what we're going to do is we're going to do three things here. So holding the number three on the keyboard and click, this will create a vector three. And this is three RGB. So if you double click in here, you can see we can pick a color. So you pick a wild color here, something like that. And then you gotta just click OK. It'll show you the RGB components here. And this is what this color is. And you're just gonna drag from here and connect it to your base color. Now I don't wanna do that here because I like this color. It just happened to be what I picked. But you can pick whatever color you want, just drag it over there. Now, we need to fill in a metallic and a roughness at the bare minimum to make sure this thing is not a super shiny quark like it shouldn't be. So I'm going to hold the 1 button and click. And this gives me a vector 1. This is a value from 0 to 1 and anything in between. So 0 0.65, 0 0.7298462, 0 you know, whatever. So we're going to choose a 0 and connect it up to metallic because it is 0% metallic. And then if you just go in here and change this to a 1 and say Enter, now he becomes a 1, and we're going to connect that into roughness. He is fully rough. And so with those in place, let me delete this guy, delete this guy. Our quark material is done. I'm just going to hit save. And I called mine quark. It really should be mat underscore quark. Shame on me for not using the right material. Okay, naming convention rather. Now, let's create our second material. This is going to be our liquid. So the liquid here, this is where the fanciness comes in. Okay, so what we have here is one one texture over top of a color blended and then panned but it sort of works in reverse order here so first thing we're going to do is create a panner and you can right click uh, let's see right click and say panner and it will come up click and it'll give you this and if you click it we're going to change our options here for me what i chose is a speed of y 0.0125 or 0.125 pardon me 0 0.125 that's where the zero came in so that worked for me and that's this nice slow up it's you know not too fast not too slow you can play around with these settings um, you don't need an x that would make it go left or right if you want that sure for me i just want an up and then my constant coordinate is zero so now here is our bubbles texture and this is a file i'll be providing to you so all you have to do is drag and drop this guy in here so if i go back to my content browser here any texture in here including bubbles here and here's a mask i was working with you can click and drag and just hold it, hold it, and when you drop it, there you go. It'll bring that in as a texture sample, okay? So that's what we did here. So we're gonna put that guy in place, and we're gonna connect up our panner to the UVs, and that will make, this panner says, constantly move speed of Y this much, whatever you plug in the UVs. So I'm gonna move my bubbles up at that constant speed. Perfect. So now, remember how we made our colors? So hold three, click, and this will be the color 
of your liquid. For me, I wanted red because, you know, it's a health potion. So we're going to leave that guy there and just kind of stack these up. And then we need this blend. So if you right click and shoot, type blend, I chose a blend soft light. Where is that guy at here? He's in here. Blend, I'm looking right past it, I'm sure. He's in here somewhere, blend soft light. He's right there, see I chose him. So blend soft light, um, not seeing it now that I go to look at it, of course, but it's, it's in the list, I promise you. So we'll choose that guy there, and I'm gonna plug in our bubbles on top and our color on bottom, and the result is gonna go into our base color, and that will give us this effect here. Now, what I also did was I chose the red and chose it as our emissive color because our liquid here, we want to make sure that it's uh, it kind of glows a little bit, and, you know, mysterious energies and all that kind of stuff. And then for our metallic and roughness, these look familiar, don't they? So you hold one again and press, and I chose zero for metallic, and I did choose a roughness of 0.65. I just wanted to give it a little bit of a, a sheen it might catch once in a while. Okay, so that's our liquid done. We save him and let's make one more and I called it glassy because I was going for not quite realistic glass. I have a realistic glass material that I followed a tutorial, but uh, I didn't like that. I wanted something a little bit more cartoonish, a little bit more board game graphics-y. So I made this one called glassy and this is very simple. So all glassy is here, he is a translucent material. So you need to change your blend mode here. You just click this guy and change your blend mode to translucent and a color here into the base color. And I didn't choose white, I didn't choose something, just a little bit of gray somewhere in here. I didn't quite want white and black, it was just too transparent. So I chose this, ended up being 0 0.305 on all three channels. And then for the opacity, I put it at a 0.35, a kind of a theme going on there, but that gives me the effect we see in game. Perfect, okay. So now, when you have imported all three of your models, so here I have potion A, potion B, potion C. The important thing we need to do is when you have them selected, let's see here, you're gonna notice that there will be multiple material slots here. And that's something that I've done inside of Maya and I can give it different materials. So for me, these go glass, up top here, see this should be glassy. Let's change it to glassy, there we go. Glassy right there and then cork and then liquid. There you go, and I have not yet found a way to tell it to name them such as here, but put those top to bottom like that, and then you'll see it work here. And if it doesn't quite work the exact same way you expect, try to swap these out. You can always do a drop down here and pick another one and see if it works out. If it gets a little screwy when you do it, then you know, just pick a different one there, and you'll be able to kind of flip, flip flop around until it works. Okay, so that's good for our uh, each of our three models. So we make sure that, uh, oops, preview. So make sure that as we bring them in here, that those three are all set up like that, okay? Now we're gonna create our blueprint. So again, right click, blueprint class. It's gonna be an actor, and let's call it BP underscore. And I already made one called potions, so I'll just make a, a, a you know, potion temp. There you go, I'll just call it something else. But then we're gonna double click that guy, and he's gonna open up. And what you're gonna have up here at first is, is we'll say scene root, what I like to do is go add component scene and then you can see that here then I drag and drop that onto the scene the default scene thing and it disappears and you just have this scene and there's nothing it's just a point in space perfect so then with this selected we're going to click add component and I'm going to say static mesh and you'll see that it'll be here and I named it potion then I'm going to go over here to the static mesh and I'm going to say which potion I want it to be of course I'm going to start with an A and you see here it lists out my materials and I just make sure that those are all set up properly and that it looks good here in the viewport. Then the only other thing I did here is I rotated it on the Y here, negative 15. So I just gave it a little bit of an angle just so that when it's in the scene it kind of has this nice momentum to it. it doesn't quite, because if it's just staying still and rotating it'd be much more difficult to see. You know, when it's angled you can tell that it's definitely rotating. Okay. So now let's go over to the event graph, and over here we're going to do a couple of things. First, let's go over here and we're going to create a new variable, and this variable here is a float, and I called it rotation per second. And once you hit compile and save, this default value will be available. Now in the default value I put 100, and this is how fast it's going to rotate. So you can change this value to whatever you like. If you want it to be 10 million and make it just spinning in place really, really fast, or 2, make it go really slow. 
for me, 100 worked out pretty nicely. So off of the event tick, we're going to do a couple of things. Uh, first, we're going to say multiply. We're going to right click and say float. So I can type around my around my microphone here. Float times float. Put that guy here. Now we made a float variable here. How convenient! So when we drag it over here and drop and say get, then we're going to connect that up as you see I already did. So connect that up into here and connect out of the delta seconds to this. Now we're going to right click and say make rotator. Again, spelling counts. Rotator right there, and that's what this guy is here. And we're going to plug this into the into the Z, the y'all here. And that's going to make it rotate around that upward kind of vector. All right, so then event tick, we're going to drag out and I'm going to select add actor world rotation. So again, that's in here. So add actor, just follow along, actor world rotation. There it is. So we select that. Just going to connect those two up and then connect our return value into there. And that's all there is to it. So we hit compile and save. And I'll show you a neat trick. So now we go back to our world, and everything's looking awesome, right? So here we have our three, and I made each of these additional two just by altering the first. So let me show you how that works. So I'm going to select this guy, and I'm going to say Alt, drag him. Oh, you're not doing what I thought you'd do. Alt, okay, he's not doing it. Come on, we need you to Alt, Alt and drag to make a copy of things. Am, am I wrong about that? There we go. <laughs> it would not work for this guy for some reason. Oh, now you work. There you go. Okay. So Alt and drag to make a copy. There you go. Now, when I made a copy of him, again, if I click right here, I can now change anything in here. So I could change this to say, let's go to potion B. So there you go. I made a potion B out of a potion A. Now, my defaults of the potion B model, as you can see, I chose the wrong material here, that glass. So I have to change that back to glassy. And there you go. So that's a potion B. Now we can make it totally crazy. You could just make a duplicate, which for some reason it's having it's having issues with me making duplicates today. Look at that. Can I make a duplicate of you? I can. <laughs> so we could do, go here, and we can even choose a model that was not originally intended to be a, uh, a potion. Let's choose some crazy, like a pillar. Look at that. And this guy should, in theory, yeah, rotate just like everybody else. So that's pretty crazy, right? You could just do something totally off the wall. But the important point here, uh, enough goofing around, is what we did was I made a duplicate of this guy, and I just change out A to B, B to C, and you can just create one of each type of potion you want here, and then you can wrap those up in another blueprint, whatever you like. Uh, and here you can see I need to change him as well, so let's do that. Uh, yeah, he's on glass instead of glassy. Now we're all set. So there you go, we have a bunch of potions, and now this blueprint can be spawned when, say, you kill an enemy or you open a chest or whatever, then we have our, our potions here that are all moving around. And take a look at that, they, they all look pretty nice. So, rotating potions, now, of course, we'd have to do some uh, some other blueprint work here if we wanted to make them pick up. You know, I don't want to just bump into them here like I am. You'd have to pick them up and, and etc. We're not going to do that today, but just wanted to share with you how I went about creating these neat little potions. And I'm going to jump over to Maya. I'll show you my little workspace here. So here I've been creating a whole bunch of different shape potions. So I have all these little pieces that I have saved aside. So what I'm going to give you today are these three. So it's these three guys over here. This is A, B, and C. And I'm going to continue to work on my own and just kind of create a whole bunch of different shapes here. So all of these different shapes. And uh, what I wanted to do is make a copy of each and then make ones that have this little metal trim and all kinds of things. So if I get a chance to get around and uh, get all of these complete, then I'll put them together in a little pack for you. I think there's 12 in total, maybe 24 if we have a metal version of each. But for now, I'll give you these three so you guys can get started with your, your games and have a nice little potion to work with. I just wanted to give you guys a chance to get some of those going so that you uh, have some kind of potion in your game. And then uh, you can follow along, and as we get further down the game, if we want to have say a fancier potion, we'll have some other options down the road. So this will get us started, and we can make sure that we can heal up from our battle encounters, and that's always a good thing. So okay, that's all I have for this week, guys. I hope you have very much enjoyed. 
you have any questions, any comments, any any tutorial requests, anything you guys want to see that we're working on throughout the game, please let me know. I'll be happy to kind of sidetrack a little bit and work on something that somebody desperately needs or has a, a burning question about. But in the meantime, I'm just going to keep going with uh, my project here, and as I have things to add to it, we'll go ahead and add some more things. So next time, I think we'll work some more on maybe the card system or maybe our point system now. So now that we have our uh, our HUD coming into into place quite well. We want to make sure that we have a, um, a point system so we can start doing some things like the cards where you purchase them and put them down to the board. So that'll be coming up in the near future. So I'll be excited for that. So as always guys, keep practicing, get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.